Hey guys, what I wanted to talk to you about today was all about jigs. Jigs can be a deadly weapon for catching active and feeding fish. While imitating the crayfish population, jigs have become even more universal because of the replication of schooling bait fish, or also known as the swim jig. If I had to choose one lure for a day, the jig would be riding shotgun, and here's why. When it comes to springtime fishing, a jig can be a powerful irritant to those bedding fish. You can go wild with crayfish colors or keep it simple with your green pumpkin, brown, and black and blue patterns. No matter the weight or color, one thing is certain, bass don't take kindly to visitors during the spawn. As summer approaches, the water warms along with our air temperature. Just like humans, bass will seek cooler water and a place to conserve energy. This water brings higher oxygen content and a supplemented environment that provides stable atmosphere. Unlike most crankbaits, a jig will often dive to these certain depths unchallenged and more efficiently than, let's say, a soft plastic worm. Into the fall, bass will often ramp up their feeding consumption. Here in the Pacific Northwest, I've noticed that late fall is a great time to catch large numbers of fish. But there's a small window of opportunity that only lasts two to three hours in my neck of the woods. As opportunistic feeders, a jig can represent a crayfish, bait fish, and other bottom feeding fish like the sculpin. As winter approaches and the bite becomes tough, jigs can still produce results because of their ability to be presented in many different fashions. You can painstakingly crawl the lure, hop it over structure and cover, or let it sit for prolonged periods of time without doing anything. The best way to catch inactive bass in the winter is to give them an opportunity to take your bait. So you may be asking how to fish the jig. My answer is simple. There is no right or wrong way. I won't get into scientific theories about the jig's success. All I know is that when I need a bite, the jig is my confidence lure that helps put fish in the boat. Practicing the lure and getting comfortable with its feel along the lake bottom will be your most important input. If you don't put the time in to understand the lure, your success will be minimal. I suggest buying a few jigs from a few different companies and basically seeing which one performs the best in your geographic location. Football head jigs are ideal for rocky shorelines, offshore structure, and the like, while a narrow head can actually be brought through weeds and vegetation without getting hung up. Finesse jigs, on the other hand, are often smaller in profile and size, which can actually be deadly for smallmouth bass or tough conditions when you need to downsize. In the end, there are jigs for just about every condition that you'll face out on the water, thus why this would be my most important pick of the day if I had to choose only one lure. For geographic purposes, I have most success around rocky shorelines and offshore structure. Casting up near the shoreline and working the jig back along a shelf or a slope with quick retrieves can actually make the jig appear to be an escaping crayfish. These bursts of energy can draw reaction strikes from largemouth and smallmouth bass, and it's something that they can't resist. It's their nature to chase down prey. The topic of jig fishing could be endless. Some anglers are confident with a rubber or silicone jig on the end of the line, while others prefer to stay away from this technique altogether. The main thing is, if you practice your casting and you pay attention to what kind of prey you are imitating, your results will be much easier to interpret. On the final note, I must say that fluorocarbon line will help greatly increase your success. While not completely invisible, 15 to 20 pound fluoro will help keep your presence unfelt and the jig down deep. Fishing with monofilament can be done, but larger diameter lines like 20 pound mono will actually negatively counteract the jig, such as a 1 quarter or 3 eighths ounce finesse jig, because the mono actually floats. A crayfish scoots along the bottom and buries itself underneath rocks, sand, and dirt. So the better that you imitate this, the more successful you're going to be out on the water.